next we have Taylor Gensler. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Taylor Gensler. I'm an early childhood and special education major here at Robert Morris University. And today I'm going to present the research that I did last semester on comprehension deficit. And this is a very important topic, not only for those that are already in the field of early childhood education, but also those that are pursuing a degree in that field. Because currently in the US, two thirds of students are unable to read on grade level at the end of fourth grade. And in order to start my presentation, I would just invite everyone to just briefly read this text that I have up on the slide. Okay. And as you finish reading the text, I invite you to think about the answer to this question. How does the Marlop Pov has come? Now, for those of you that were able to answer that question, kudos to you, but for the rest of you that were unable to answer this question, which I'm sure is the majority of you in this room, um, I want you to think about why it was so difficult to answer that question. It's not difficult because you weren't able to read the text because you subconsciously applied your knowledge of phonics and phonetically sounded out each word to be able to read it. So the difficulty stemming from your inability to make sense of these words and to really derive meaning from what you're reading. So with this short exercise, uh, most of you experienced what it's like to suffer from a comprehension deficit, meaning despite your ability to accurately decode the text, you were unable to really make sense of what you were read reading and to derive meaning from that text. So currently in the U.S. about 10% of primary school age children are suffering from a comprehension deficit. And in order to fully comprehend text, students have to not only be able to decode the text and to derive meaning from the text, but they also have to simultaneously be activating their background knowledge. For example, if a teacher passes out a poem entitled Flowers, the students are already thinking about what they know about flowers and before they actually begin reading. Um, in addition to that, students have to be able to make inferences while they're reading, meaning they have to go beyond what's explicitly stated in the text and try and figure out what the author might have meant by a specific sentence or a paragraph. And the last thing that students have to be simultaneously doing as they're reading is applying fix-up strategies. And the most common fix-up strategies that students apply is rereading when there's a breakdown in comprehension. Now, as you can see with the statistics on this slide, there's a growing number of students who are being diagnosed as having either ADHD or autism. And with this growing statistic, I dedicated a portion of my research towards figuring out how teachers can help this population of students avoid the development of a comprehension deficit. Now, before I talk about some intervention strategies that teachers can use, I just wanted to briefly talk about some typical behaviors that students with ADHD and autism might present with. Um, for example, students with ADHD typically exhibit behaviors that limit their ability to not only decode text, but also to filter and organize information in their brain as they are reading. And students with autism typically exhibit behaviors that limit their ability to relate to characters in the stories and to really understand the emotions and feelings that the characters are experiencing. So there are many different strategies that teachers can use to help students avoid developing a comprehension deficit. And the first one is issuing a reading interest inventory. And what this will do is it will allow the teacher to determine what prior um, preconceived ideas and attitudes the students might be bringing to the table in terms of their reading ability. And this will ultimately help the teacher to, to determine if these attitudes are, is what is contributing to the comprehension deficit. Another strategy that teachers can use is activating the student's background knowledge. 
and I already previously touched upon this. So if, let's say for example, a teacher is going to give the students a short story that is set in a different country, it'd be a good idea that the teacher not only address maybe the location of where the country is, but also maybe some customs and traditions that are uh, that characterize that country so that students have some sort of knowledge base before they actually begin reading the story. Another strategy that teachers can use is um, the story maps, graphic organizers, and KWL charts. And these are extremely beneficial for students to um, visually represent the story, maybe to retell main events of the story, classify main ideas, and ultimately just monitor their reading as they are um, proceeding through the, through the text. And the last strategy that teachers can use is an emotional thermometer. And this is extremely beneficial for students who present with autism and have a difficult time relating to characters in the story and understanding the emotions that they are feeling. And what this will do is it will allow the student to use the shades of colors to not only identify the emotions that the character might be feeling, but also to visualize the intensity of that emotion that's being experienced by the character. In addition to that, the emotional thermometers can be used to compare maybe one character's emotions to another character's emotions, and also to see how those emotions might change due to different um, details that are happening in the story. <clears throat> And as I conclude this presentation, I invite you to read these alarming statistics present on the slide that reiterate the importance of teachers implementing valid and reliable intervention strategies to help students avoid the development of a comprehension deficit.